RAS to solve the system and determine the particular solution and the solution set to the corresponding homogeneous system. We will express the solution to the given system in the form shown below, where once we have the equations for x, y, z, and w, this first column matrix will contain the constants of the equations, and this column matrix will give us the particular solution, and then we'll have the coefficients of y in the second column matrix, and the coefficients of w in the third column matrix. And the sum involving y and w will be the solution set to the corresponding homogeneous system. To solve the given system, we'll write an augmented matrix, and then write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. So I've already set this up here on the side. From equation one, we have the row five, negative 15, negative one, negative 25, negative 27. The second equation gives us the second row of 12, negative 36, negative two, negative 58, and negative 64. The third equation gives us the row three, negative nine, zero, negative 12, negative 15. Notice how there's a zero in the third column here because there is no z term in the equation. The next step is to write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form, which is shown here on the right. Now that we have reduced row echelon form, let's determine the pivots, which are the first non-zero entries of each row. The pivots are in row one, column one, and row two, column three, which indicates the pivot columns are column one and column three, and therefore x and z are the basic variables, and the remaining variables of y and w are the free variables, which does match the form of the solution shown below. The next step is to write the equations for each row of the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. Row one indicates that x minus three y minus four w equals negative five, In the second row, we have z plus five w equals two. And because y and w are free variables, we also include the equations y equals y and w equals w. Because y and w are the free variables, we now need to express x and z in terms of y and w by solving the first equation for x and the second equation for z. Solving the first equation for x, we have x equals negative five plus three y plus four w. In the second equation, solving for z, we have z equals two minus five w. And the last two equations remain the same. y equals y and w equals w. And now we use these four equations to write the solution in the form shown below. Because x equals negative five plus three y plus four w, the constant term is negative five, the coefficient of y is three, the coefficient of w is four, which means the first entry in the first column matrix is negative five, the constant term. The first entry into the second column matrix is the coefficient of y, which is three. And the first entry into the third column matrix is the coefficient of w, which is four. Next, we know y is equal to y, and therefore the constant term is zero, the coefficient of y is one, and there is no w term, and therefore the coefficient of w is zero. Next, we have z equals two minus five w, the constant term is two, the coefficient of y is zero, and the coefficient of w is negative five. And then finally we have w equals w, the constant term is zero, the coefficient of y is zero, and the coefficient of w is one. So this is another way to express the solution to the given system. And from here, this first column matrix that consists of the constants from the four equations is the particular solution. And the sum here involving y and w is the solution set to the corresponding homogeneous system, which would be the system of equations that looks like the one given, except all the equations would be equal to zero or all the right sides would be zero. I hope you found this helpful.